While the Olympics dominated global headlines in Paris over the weekend, there was out of this world news in Earth's orbit. Successful testing has brought new hope for bringing Starliner stranded astronauts back home sooner than later. While those astronauts look forward to returning to Earth, a group of space tourists looks forward to blasting off to the edge of space. And that includes one student from right here in North Carolina. Queen City News Chief Transportation Correspondent, pilot, self-defined space geek, May K. Beeler bringing us up to date. Wow, there's a lot going on there. A Maka. lot going on. So good news and bad news, okay, for Boeing Starliner crew. So first, the good news. This weekend, a Starliner team successfully completed a docked hot fire test of the spacecraft's reaction control system. You know it had previous issues with those troublesome thrusters. Well, the thrusters had been plagued by problems delaying the space capsule's scheduled return to Earth. Test pilot astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore, they docked the Starliner at the International Space Station on June 6th for what was supposed to be a week-long stay. Oh my goodness, that was over 50 days ago. They're still up there troubleshooting. All right, so more good news. Boeing and NASA are happy with Saturday's test results. So a review of that data that's gonna take place later this week with opportunities to return the spacecraft to Earth available throughout August. The bad news, well, there still isn't a set return date. So while SUNY and Butch welcome their overdue return, Jeff Bezos Blue Origin has announced its crew for its next space tourism flight, and that's gonna blast off to the edge of space. Six people will fly on the New Shepard Mission 26. That includes a NASA-funded researcher, professor, cardiologist, an entrepreneur, a businessman, and a college student who will make history. Carson Kitchen is a senior at the University of Carolina at Chapel Hill. She'll become the youngest woman to fly to the Carmen line. Now that's super cool. I know. Maybe it takes a little Tar Heel flag or mm. something with her up there. It. You said the Carmen line. Is yes. that a line in the atmosphere? What, yeah, what is that? It's a, it's a definition of a boundary line where space officially starts. Mm. So oh. the Carmen line, it's 62 miles up and it's internationally recognized as the boundary line where space starts. Now, it's interesting to note the military and NASA, they consider 50 miles up to be where they're gonna give you your astronaut wings. So if you fly 50 miles and up, you're an astronaut. You're an astronaut, but she's going past that. Yeah, the Carmen line, <clears throat> excuse me, is 62 miles up. She's gonna be the okay. youngest person. Uh, to go to the Carmen line, so pretty cool. That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay, May Kay, we've seen a bunch of different launch strategies from SpaceX, Boeing, all these different ones. How does this launch process work for Jeff Bezos and, and this rocket? Yeah, so Blue Origin is really neat. It's really clean for the environment. It's a rocket booster. It takes off and the little capsule's on top. And once it gets to a certain altitude, the booster separates, comes back out down to Earth and lands. It's reusable. Now the capsule's up there in space and it's only 11 minutes. The whole thing is only 11 minutes. Wow. They're up there in space, they unbuckle, big windows in the capsule, six people up there. They float around, take pictures, and then gently come back down with parachutes and land. The whole space empennage there, it's, it's all reusable. And it's clean cool. for the environment. Water vapor, not any carbon emissions. Very interesting here, no pilots on board. Fully autonomous. Whoa. I want a pilot. Uh, I'll be your pilot. No. I mean, we haven't seen autonomous cars do so well. Right. So let's take this one 62 miles into space and yeah. see how. Okay, okay, so you said about 11 minutes is the journey. It'll That's be it. It'll be memorable for sure. <laughs> how much for those 11 minutes? Mm -hmm. So okay. typically, we talk about different space tourist options. Right, right. Typically, the cheapest seat, 250 grand. So 250K, $250,000 wow. a seat typically. Now some of these are researchers that get to go. I don't know if the college students got a deal, mm -hmm. you know, to get to go um, for studies or whatever. I need to find out because I want to get on that list. Right. Uh, but there are other options, you know, SpaceX. Oh. Of course, we've got Virgin Galactic, the space plane. It takes off from an airport um, attached to another plane. And then at a certain altitude, the spaceship departs and then goes up to a certain altitude. They fly around f for about three minutes and then come back and land at an airport. Then we have the space balloon, space perspectives. Mm -hmm. oh, it goes yeah. up really slow comes back down, it's like a six hour journey, but they have a bar on board. 
Whoa. And a fancy, Whoa. And okay. a fancy restroom. Well, you've been holding out on us, May Kay. You should have started with that one. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, either way, you got to have an out of this world wallet to do any of those. Yes, you do. Yeah. But it sounds amazing. So, all right, May Kay. Thank you.